My name is Thomas, and I live in Salem, Massachusetts. I've always loved Halloween, maybe because of where I live. Salem has a long history of strange and creepy things, especially around Halloween. People come here from all over the country to experience the haunted tours, the ghost stories, and the eerie atmosphere. But last Halloween, something happened to me that made me rethink everything I thought I knew about Halloween. I've never told anyone this before, but I feel like it's time to share my story. I don't want to believe it was real, but I can't find any other explanation. It was a chilly night, and the streets of Salem were packed with people dressed in costumes, laughing and taking photos. The entire town was buzzing with excitement. My friends and I decided to go out for some drinks and enjoy the Halloween parties, but we also had a little tradition visiting the old cemetery at midnight. It was something we did every year, but this time, it didn't go the way we expected. The cemetery in Salem is ancient, filled with crumbling tombstones and dark, twisted trees. The ground is uneven, and if you didn't know better, you might think it's been forgotten. But every Halloween, the place comes alive in a strange, unsettling way. People dare each other to go inside, but few actually stay for long. The stories about ghosts, witches, and strange happenings in that graveyard are endless. That night, we had a few drinks in us and felt bold. We laughed about how it was just another night and nothing ever happened in the cemetery, despite the rumors. There were four of us, me, my friend Jake, his girlfriend Emily, and a guy named Rick who I didn't know too well, but who was up for the adventure. As we walked through the cemetery gates, I immediately felt a chill that had nothing to do with the cold night air. It felt like we were being watched. I brushed it off, thinking it was just nerves. The full moon lit up the gravestones, casting long shadows that made everything look twisted and strange. We wandered deeper into the cemetery, our flashlights flickering as we joked about finding ghosts. Then, Jake dared us to stay for an hour no phones. No distractions, just silence. We all agreed, thinking it would be easy. We found a spot near a large, ancient tombstone and sat down. That's when things started to feel off. The first thing I noticed was the silence. It was too quiet. We were in the middle of town, but it was like all the noise from the parties, the music, and the people had just disappeared. Even the wind stopped blowing through the trees. It felt like the cemetery was completely cut off from the world outside. Rick started laughing nervously, saying it was probably just our imagination. But then, we heard it. A soft, shuffling sound coming from behind one of the tombstones. It was faint at first, like someone dragging their feet. We all froze, shining our flashlights in the direction of the noise, but we didn't see anything. Emily whispered, did you hear that? And Jake nodded, his face suddenly serious. The sound got louder, like it was getting closer. I stood up, trying to get a better look, but there was nothing there. Just gravestones and shadows. Then, out of nowhere, the air got colder freezing, like we had walked into a refrigerator. I could see my breath in front of me, and the hair on the back of my neck stood up. That's when we saw it. A figure standing at the edge of the cemetery, barely visible in the darkness. At first, I thought it was someone playing a prank, maybe another group of people trying to scare us. But as I looked closer, I realized this figure wasn't moving like a person. It was tall, thin, and its body was contorted in a way that didn't look right. Its head was tilted to one side, and its arms hung awkwardly at its sides. We all stood there, staring, trying to make sense of what we were seeing. I called out, hey, who's there? But the figure didn't respond. It didn't move. It just stood there, watching us. My heart started racing, and I could feel the panic setting in. Rick, trying to act tough, said, it's just some kid messing with us, and started walking toward the figure. But as he got closer, the figure suddenly jerked, like it was trying to move but couldn't. That's when I saw its face, or rather, the lack of one. 
There was no face. Just a blank, smooth surface where eyes, a nose, and a mouth should be. I felt like I was going to throw up. I grabbed Rick's arm and pulled him back. We need to go, I whispered, but my voice was shaking. Before we could even take a step, the figure started moving toward us. It didn't walk, it glided, like it wasn't touching the ground at all. Its movements were jerky and unnatural, and the closer it got, the more I could feel this overwhelming sense of dread. It was like every instinct in my body was screaming at me to run, but I was frozen in place. Emily started crying, and Jake was trying to calm her down, but I could tell he was just as scared as we were. The figure kept coming, faster now, and the air around us felt heavy, like it was pressing down on us. I don't know what came over me, but I finally snapped out of it and yelled, run. We bolted for the gate, stumbling over the uneven ground, not daring to look back. My heart was pounding in my ears, and all I could think about was getting out of that cemetery. I could hear Emily sobbing, Rick cursing, and Jake breathing heavily behind me. But what scared me the most was the sound I didn't hear, the sound of footsteps following us. When we finally reached the gate, I turned around for one last look. The figure was gone. The cemetery was silent again, like nothing had ever happened. But I knew what I saw, and so did my friends. We didn't talk much after that night. Rick moved away a few months later, and Emily and Jake broke up soon after. I stayed in Salem, but I haven't been back to that cemetery since. I don't plan on ever going back. Now, every Halloween, I can't help but wonder was it all just a drunken hallucination? Or did we really see something that night? Something that shouldn't exist? So, what do you think? Have you ever experienced anything like this on Halloween? My name is Olivia, and I've lived in New Orleans for most of my life. This city is known for its haunted history ghosts, vampires, and all sorts of creepy legends. You got used to hearing strange stories, especially around Halloween. But last year, I experienced something that still gives me chills. It happened on Halloween night, when my friends and I decided to visit one of the old plantations outside the city. There are a lot of plantations around New Orleans, and most of them are rumored to be haunted. We chose one that wasn't as popular for tourists, hoping to avoid crowds and get a real spooky experience. The plantation Belle Pointe was a sprawling, decaying estate with overgrown gardens and a crumbling mansion at its center. The owners had long since abandoned the place, and it had been left to rot in the swampy Louisiana heat. The locals said it was cursed, and no one in town ever talked about it. That should have been a red flag, but we were feeling adventurous. There were four of us, me, my boyfriend Chris, my friend Ashley, and her brother Luke. We parked the car a little way down the road and walked toward the mansion with nothing but our flashlights. The air was thick with humidity and the crickets and frogs made the night feel alive. But as we got closer to the plantation, everything went quiet. No more insects, no more sounds, just silence. We reached the front of the mansion and I immediately felt uneasy. The house looked like something out of a nightmare. Its windows were dark and broken, and the front door hung open like it was inviting us in. Chris, of course, was all about going inside. He said we'd regret it if we didn't at least explore the place. So, against my better judgment, we stepped inside. The moment we crossed the threshold, the air got colder. Not just cooler, but icy like someone had turned on an air conditioner in the middle of the swamp. My skin prickled, and I could feel something watching us, though I couldn't explain why. We walked through the mansion, shining our flashlights over the peeling wallpaper, the dusty furniture, and the cracked floors. It felt like the house was frozen in time, like the people who once lived there had just disappeared and left everything behind. As we made our way upstairs, things started to get really weird. Luke swore he heard footsteps behind us, but when we turned around, no one was there. We tried to laugh it off, 
but the atmosphere was getting heavier by the second. I kept feeling like I was being watched, and my heart was racing. Then, we heard it. A soft, creaking sound, like someone or something, was slowly opening one of the doors down the hall. We all froze, shining our flashlights toward the noise, but we didn't see anything. The door at the end of the hall was slightly ajar, and beyond, it was pitch black. Chris, being his usual fearless self, decided to check it out. He pushed the door open, and inside was what looked like an old bedroom, untouched for years. The bed was covered in a thick layer of dust, and a broken mirror hung on the wall. Suddenly, the door slammed shut behind him. We all jumped, and I ran to try and open it, but it wouldn't budge. Chris was banging on the door from the inside, shouting for us to let him out, but no matter how hard we pulled, it wouldn't open. Then, everything went silent. I stopped pulling on the door, and Luke shined his flashlight over it. That's when we saw it handprints. Not just any handprints, but small, child-sized ones, smeared across the wood in what looked like dirt, or blood. I don't even know. They hadn't been there before. Chris's banging stopped, and for a few terrifying seconds, I thought something had happened to him. But then, just as suddenly as it had locked, the door flew open, and Chris stumbled out, pale and shaking. What happened? I asked, but he just shook his head, refusing to talk about it. His eyes were wide with fear, and he looked like he'd seen something terrible in that room. We didn't stick around to find out what it was. We ran out of that house as fast as we could, and none of us have been back since. Chris never told us what he saw in that room, and to be honest, I don't think I want to know. So, what do you think? Let me know in the comments. And don't forget to like and subscribe. My name is Michael, and I live in Portland, Oregon. Halloween has always been one of my favorite times of the year. I'm not superstitious or anything, but last Halloween, I experienced something that made me question whether some of the old urban legends are true. There's this road just outside of Portland called Witch's Hollow. It's a long, winding road that leads deep into the forest, and people say it's haunted. The legend goes that, a long time ago, a woman accused of witchcraft was chased into the woods by an angry mob. She was never seen again, and some believe her spirit still haunts the area, cursing anyone who dares to enter her domain. It sounds ridiculous, right? But last year, a few friends and I decided to check it out. We thought it would be a fun Halloween adventure, nothing more. It was me, my friend David, his girlfriend Sarah, and another friend, Mark. We piled into my car and drove out to Witch's Hollow just before midnight. The road was dark and isolated, with thick trees lining both sides. The deeper we went, the more the trees seemed to close in around us. The headlights barely cut through the blackness, and there was this eerie fog that hung low to the ground, making it feel like we were driving into another world. About halfway down the road, we started hearing strange noises coming from the trees. It was like a low whispering, but we couldn't make out any words. Sarah swore she saw something moving in the woods, but when we stopped the car and looked, there was nothing there. We kept driving, trying to shake off the creepy feeling that was building up in all of us. Then, out of nowhere, the car's headlights flickered and went out. The engine sputtered and died, leaving us sitting in total darkness. David laughed nervously, thinking it was just the car acting up, but I could tell he was freaked out too. I tried starting the car again, but nothing happened. The air inside the car felt thick, like it was pressing down on us. That's when we noticed something standing in the road just a few feet in front of us. At first, we thought it was a person, maybe a hiker or someone messing with us. But as the fog thinned, we saw that it wasn't a person at all. It was a woman, dressed in tattered clothes, her hair wild and matted. She was barefoot, and her face. I can't even describe it. It was twisted, like she was screaming, but no sound came out. She just stood there, 
staring at us with empty eyes. Sarah screamed, and Mark yelled at me to drive, but the car wouldn't start. I kept trying the ignition, my hand shaking, but it was useless. The woman began moving toward us, slowly, her feet barely touching the ground. Every instinct in me was screaming to get out of there, but we were trapped. Just as she got close enough that I could see the whites of her eyes, the car roared to life. I didn't think I just hit the gas and we sped down the road, the woman disappearing into the fog behind us. None of us said a word until we were back in the city, and even then, we could barely talk about what had happened. I don't know who or what we saw that night, but I do know one thing. I'll never go back to Witch's Hollow again. So, what do you think? Have you ever had something like this happen to you? Let me know in the comments. And don't forget to like and subscribe to Saturday Stories. If you have a creepy story of your own, send it in, I'd love to hear it. See you guys in next.